all you wonderful listeners. Welcome back to the Campy Influence Podcast. This is our Pop Culture Tuesday topic, and what broke the polls was wrestling for uh, Brody Lee. We're going to talk about tributes and just a, a, a little dive into Brody Lee's past, but also Serena's love for wrestling. And then we're going to go ahead and also talk about the GLWA Vendetta and our CW show, hashtag Kevin Storm Not Allowed, um, as well as other things, all wrestling. So if you're a wrestling fan or if you just like sticking around. All right, guys, let's jump into it. For Brody Lee, it's more so we can focus on like all the tributes, what AEW did, how oh, little yeah. WWE did. Um, hmm. because there's actually quite a bit of tension between AEW and WWE. So there were quite that. a few articles that said that Vince McMahon, who is the chairman of WWE, wouldn't allow much of a tribute. And I think he really only did a tribute because a lot of the fans were like waiting on WWE because Huber spent so much time there. And because he was uh, only recently with AEW, right? Yeah, he had just a, gotten 2020, a very short time. Yeah, yeah, and then pretty much right after he had his dog collar match with Cody, he left for an undisclosed injury, which the undisclosed injury turned out to be his non COVID lung issue. And yeah. now we're sitting here getting ready to talk about a tribute for him, which so. is so sad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have done so much crying since I've been watching tribute videos for the last like two to three weeks. And actually, yeah. I don't know, because I know your memory is iffy, but yes. when we first <laughs> started to do the podcast stuff and we did our test the day after Christmas, I got on. And do you remember when I told you that a wrestler had just passed away like right before I got on to talk to you? Nope. <laughs> well, he was that wrestler that had passed away. We had okay. literally just found out about it right as I was getting ready to get on here and talk to you. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Holy crap. So our tri the tributes, you want to dive into his tributes and or do you want to like talk about his timeline or tributes? What do you want to like concentrate on with him? Um, I mean, we can kind of run through a little bit of like his timeline just because like I said you don't really know a whole lot, so it would be easy to get yeah. a little bit of backstory, especially yeah. because being part of the Wyatt family and the Bludgeon Brothers okay. and then becoming leader of the Dark Order kind of sums up a little bit of who he was in front of the camera. Yeah. And then when we get into the tributes, we can kind of go into how he was behind the camera because... That's where mm. you found out just how great of a person, a father, a friend that he really was. Well, yeah. And I, I know a little bit about him. So uh, he was born in 1979, which I'm looking at that now. But so he's born in 1979 and mm. it's Jonathan Huber. And so I'm like, OK, because I was confused because I was like, OK, so there's these two different uh, names for him. And I was like Brody Lee and uh, what was it? Luke Harper. Yes. Um, yeah, and I was like, why? I was so confused. Now I get it. Because it was it was a WWE and AEW, right? Yes, the they were two between... separate personas. Um, he actually did trademark yeah. Brody Lee, though, right before he was released from WWE. So he 100% owned the rights to use the name Brody Lee. Okay. Now, I know what, from what I understand, he had to kind of re- brand himself in a way when he went to AEW to try to give himself like a different uh, like what he, where he wears like his business suits or whatever so ever like bi-weekly bi -weekly, he was like looking forward to like changing things up and making it his own like the suits colorful suits and stuff like that um, trying to stay away from that old, old image kind of right well he re um kind of rebranded I guess his Brody Lee persona because he was Brody Lee before WWE and everything oh, so okay. he actually ended up going back to oh. be coming Brody Lee okay because when he was in Rochester pro wrestling 
that was actually when he debuted as Brody Lee, which I love where he came up with Brody Lee because I am a huge Kevin Smith fan and I love Mallrats and Brody is one of the funniest people. So the fact that he took Brody from Jason Lee's character and then yeah. Lee from Jason Lee and combined the two, I thought I never would have thought about it, but it makes sense because if you guys know like bro or wow jason lee when he was in my name is earl they kind of look a lot alike that's what they were that's what he was saying that they looked alike they resembled each other so that's why he kind of chose it. someone one of his friends had brought up the fact that he kind of looked like the dude from mall rat or something like that and so he kind of had the idea to do that yeah super cool and i didn't know he trademarked that name so nobody could take that right nobody yes. can use that well and the other thing I think of why he trademarked it, though, as well, is because it is his son's name. Oh, is it? Is it really Brody Lee Jr.? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's Brody and there's Nolan. Okay. Yeah, and Brody Lee Jr. was the one in the tribute that I sent you, right? Yes. It Nolan was in it, too, but he was in the background being held by Amanda, I believe, at the time. And they kind of let oh. uh, Brody take over and be the main focus. Yeah. It, that's where I was kind of, that was a tearjerker for me because, like, he's so little and that has to be so hard on him to lose his dad. And how, how uh, hands-on Jonathan, a.k.a. Brody Lee, was with his son. His kids, I mean. His kids, oh, I should I say. Know. That's one thing I uh, learned about him. And I actually really like him for the person that he is. Because the podcast I watched, I got to see kind of behind the scenes and how he was acting. And he, explain he explained everything about, like, uh, kind of, about a a e a uh, WWE and switching over to AEW and stuff like that. But anyways, I digress. So I got a lot of good information and how cool he is behind the scenes, I guess. Right? <laughs> yeah yeah no i there is literally not one horrible story that i have heard over the last three or four weeks it's crazy to actually think it's been about a month and there have just been so many wonderful stories shared i actually watched a video yesterday and i ended up having to show it to my husband joe because it was the funniest comp of things that I have seen the young bucks who run um, being the elite on YouTube put together a compilation of Brody Lee pretty much being on BTE and it does have explicit content because there's a lot of f-bombs and Ooh. bitch and things like that yeah. But it was just hilarious to see that side of him because in WWE, he never really got to express really who he was. Yeah. He was in a lot of, when he was Luke Harper, he was very silent. And if he did talk, it was very rare, at least that I remember. Yeah. And to see just who he became as Brody Lee, the exalted one, or Mr. Brody Lee when he started to change and wear the business suits and stuff. He definitely, you could tell, had a lot more creative freedom with AEW, and it was a breath of fresh air to see that side of him because it was completely different from his time with the Wyatt family and with the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah, he t he touched on that in the podcast I watched, and uh, he talked about how he was happier. He kind of, uh, in a way, was like, eh, on WWE and just kind of embracing how A AEW was like letting him be able to do these things that he's been kind of wanting to do and hadn't been able to do. Well, um, a lot of what I was reading, he was having issues with getting a lot of his creative ideas approved through WWE. Like yeah. he really wanted a singles run and he only ever had one and he won the Intercontinental Championship during that time, but he really didn't ever get to hold on to it. I mean, he was the Intercontinental Champ for 27 days. That's not even a whole month and some people can hold it for, hold title belts for a year. Yeah. 
So to see someone as talented as he was only get pretty much like one single shot and it be a title run for 27 days really was kind of sad because he was a fantastic wrestler. His discus clothesline is by far one of my favorite finishing moves that there was because it looks like he was knocking somebody's head completely off. And I really enjoyed just watching him take his arm, run at someone and just lay him out. And there were times where you'd see his opponent just flop around. And I mean, he looked like he annihilated them. He's a big guy, by the way. Yeah, his muscles he was. And how tall? He seems tall, at least compared to the one guy he was walking down the hallway with. Oh, my gosh. They call him the cow something cowboy. Okay, because I, I watched a bit on YouTube. He's walking down the hallway with this guy, and the guy's like, hey, I got on your uh, website. And I, oh, he was like, I, you're talking about Hangman Page. Yes! yes! Yes, I did see that bit. Yes. Okay. I do know what you're talking about now. Yeah, him next to Brody Lee next to Hangman, Hangman Page. Okay, so Brody Lee next to Hangman Page he makes mm -hmm. him, Hangman Page look little, <laughs> mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. And I'll, that's when I really got the gravity of how big this dude, how big Brody Lee is. Like, dang, son, what do you do? What do you bench? Like, whoo. <laughs> well, bringing up, like, him and weightlifting and stuff, uh, one of the tributes that I really enjoyed seeing was done by Seth Rollins. He wrestles for WWE. And he's big into CrossFit. And I guess Brody was too. Yeah. And he actually, because I wanted to bring his quote into it, there is now a Brody CrossFit workout. Because oh. Seth Rollins is quoted as saying, in the CrossFit communi community, we dedicate workouts to heroes, and Brody was. Brody was a hero to me and his friends because of how loyal he was and of how funny and kind and generous he was. But more importantly, he was a hero to his family. That's where his heart was to his boys and his wife. So today we have got a workout in his honor. And Aww. if I had the, ex the access to, you know, the weights to do these 12 deadlifts, it's four rounds of 12 deadlifts, 26 push-ups, and then depending on if you're a male or female, you have to do 20 or 15 calories on a bike. And then after the four rounds, you have to do one burpee because Brody actually, Seth put in there that Brody hated burpees. So they put the one burpee on the end just to be kind of like, ha ha, ha, -ha. Brody, here you go. <laughs> one burpee has to be done. Burpees are killer. Where right? you jump up and then you have to go down and jump up, like that kind of thing. It's hard if you're listening. I'm sorry, it's very hard for me to <laughs> us to explain that. It's basically you just do that. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh, that's funny. They did a little nod to him. He seems like a a pretty funny guy though too, like really down to earth. That's what I gathered. Like yeah. I would like I would yeah I would like probably like sit down and chill with this guy. He was very down to earth. Like he didn't let things get to his head. At all, like any of the fame, anything like that? No, he definitely, from a lot of the tributes I've listened to, and I also, in the last few days, have listened to The New Day do their podcast, where yeah. they had a couple of the guys on, and they just, he was very humbling. And Yeah, uh, yeah he's a very humble guy. They said that he absolutely loved to rag on you. That was one of his favorite things. But he never really meant it entirely maliciously. No, yeah. So it was just kind of to Pick get a fun. rise out of you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there were just, there are so many stories that people like Tyler Breeze and Cesaro and Biggie and Kofi and Eric Rowan or Eric Redbeard however you want to refer to them they were the six that were on there oh and i can't even, i'm mad at myself because i'm such a big up up down down girl that i actually forgot austin creed xavier woods but all six of them were just sharing countless stories 
and talking about how much of a family man he was and how he loved to pick on people and Aww. how helpful he was or his wife Amanda had been during rough times. It was yeah. just, it was funny because, you know, sometimes they would give a really funny story, but you could tell just how heartfelt and upset they were that well, of I did cry quite yeah. a few times, actually. Oh. <sighs> I'm a big softie, though, so this really, like, hit me in the feels watching all these tributes because you could just feel the emotion. Well, to you, how was Brody Lee to you? Before anything happened, like, what? where did he rank for you? As far as, like, your favorite wrestler and... Well, I mean, he's not my top two. My top two will never change. But he definitely was probably, I would say, in my top 10 because he just, he was very, in my opinion, and this is completely my opinion, so don't take it for anything more than that. But yeah. I feel he was just entirely underutilized in WWE, and we never really got to see him to his full potential. He said and, that himself, though, Serena. He's happier with AEW because he was able to actually do things. Right. They yeah. definitely provided just a lot more freedom for him. And going back, because I don't have access to watch AEW weekly, or I would. Because the only thing I can watch weekly is SmackDown. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my guys on SmackDown. But I would love to be able to watch AEW as well. The stuff that I do get to see when I watch the videos on Instagram or Facebook... Or YouTube, you yeah. could just, he, he, it was a whole different person. And it made me appreciate him even more. Yeah. So I would definitely say he is in my top 10. But like I say, stated before, one and two will never change. Those so, two spots have been locked in by two people and have been since I was a little girl. Okay, so I was wanting to ask you, so the listeners could know. What are your top two? Or I know a lot of two? a lot of people are gonna give me crap for my <laughs> number one and two. Well, not one of them because Eddie Guerrero, hands down, I will always, always love that man. He passed Why? away. I don't oh. know really what drew me to Eddie, but when I was younger. He just, he always had my attention. He was in WCW first, but I never watched him in WCW. It wasn't until he came over to WWE that I even really knew who he was. Because growing up, when the Monday Night Wars and everything were happening, my family yeah. was always WWE as opposed to WCW. So I never really saw any of that growing up. And I don't know... I think it was just Eddie's personality because he would always come out and he'd be shimmying and <laughs> because he was Latino. So yeah, he, just, he had that Latin flair. He had just this really big personality and he was very charismatic in the ring. And he was just, he was very, very good. Yeah. Um, but he, he passed away. Yeah. Eddie hasn't been with us for quite some time. So did they give him a tribute? You told me they don't always do that. So what's up with they that? They don't always do it to the extent that Brody Lee got it. Like the way AEW handled Brody Lee yeah. is the first time I have really ever seen a tribute to that extent. Okay. Um, WWE typically will give maybe a tribute episode. But I feel like lately they've kind of gotten away from that. They might still, in a sense, do a tribute episode. But you pretty much get the 10 bell salute. They do a tribute video. And then it's on with the episode. Yeah. AEW, in my opinion, killed the Brody Lee tribute. Because they they took it above and beyond. Yeah, they did I bring mean, in his son out. They had his boots and bandana in the middle of the ring they retired yeah. the red strap tnt championship belt and yeah. gave it to Brody lee jr 
they all they pretty much have said that Brody Lee Jr. has a spot in AEW when he comes of age if he wants to wrestle for them. Wow. <laughs> um, Tony Khan even went as far as getting the rights to Brody Lee's entrance music. AEW president and CEO Tony Khan actually went as far as buying the rights or purchasing the rights to Old 55 by Tom Watts or Waits. My bad. Sorry, guys. I'm terrible with names. And <laughs> um, so, you know, that is entirely Brody's now. Wow. Wow. So so if, when, if his son wants a spot, say he wants to take up the spot, is he going to get that entrance music? Or does he, do you think he's going to want to um, be, like, separate from his dad? Like, he wants to create his own identity, of course, you know? What do you think? I mean, maybe I not because see him wanting to, maybe. But I feel like his dad was such a big influence on, in his life for that. I It's so sad. I know. For, like, the eight years that yeah. I think he'd want to pay tribute to his dad. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see him wanting to use his dad's entrance music. Yeah, see that tribute like got me. I mean, I was doing my makeup watching it, and I was like, oh my gosh, please don't cry. I had like the ball in my throat kind of thing, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh my god, that's so sad. That's how good they did. They got somebody who doesn't like is not a, like a complete avid fan, right? They got yeah. someone like me choked up. I'm like, that's voila, good job. Just saying, they did a really good tribute. And yeah, you know, I can't argue with AEW's tribute at all. In my opinion, it was a ten out of ten. And you know, I'm happy and thankful that WWE at least did something. They did the ten bell salute. They had a small tribute video, but. It really was the wrestlers who provided probably the best tribute because those men and women went yeah. above and beyond on their own social media platforms right? and was there to say really well, nice things about Brody Lee or Luke Harper. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to completely shame WWE because if you go on the network, there is actually a... Like, best of Luke Harper anthology. It's, like, over three hours, actually. Oh, wow. But it's supposed to highlight wrestling, and it's got some commentary. I have yet to get to watch it, but it is there yeah. if you guys do want to go check it out. There are just... There's so much stuff on YouTube that yeah, you can find wow. of people just saying really, really great things and sharing some awesome stories about him. Yeah, and if you guys haven't had a chance, too, while we're giving out some, like, resources here or where you can find any more information about them, uh, I've got, uh, it was, so, Mr. Brody Lee was on the AEW Unrestricted podcast as well. So, if you're here on this podcast, maybe you'll head on over to that one and uh, check that out, too. So, there's that. I just want, that's the one I watched, by the way, mm -hmm. and it gave out a lot of good stuff, yeah. Yeah. So uh, so while we're talking about the other wrestlers, they gave uh, really great tributes to him, right? Uh, from what I understand, he is one of the only wrestlers that really, like, dived into both WWE and AEW. It's not a common thing. So, like, he was able to kind of know everybody and make friends with all of them, or is that accurate? Um, that's not entirely accurate because there's okay. actually quite a few wrestlers who have gone okay. from WWE to AEW. Cody Rhodes, who is actually one of the, I don't know if he's part owner or, I know he's big part of AEW, but he is actually from WWE. Okay. So it's happened uh, quite a few times. Yeah. I mean, you have okay. Cody Rhodes, you have Chris Jericho, you have John Moxley, you had Brody Lee, oh, um, Vicky Guerrero, well, I know, is part of AEW now. Diamond Dallas Page works with AEW. Pretty much all these people have been part of WWE at some point. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So why do you think they wanted to move? Why do you think Brody Lee wanted to move to AEW? He, like, took the chance. He took the plunge, right? Is that correct yeah, to say that? Yeah, um, 
He definitely, from what I learned watching the New Day's podcast, they said that he pretty much put everything they had and gambled on AEW. And I'm really, really thankful that it worked out because he did amazing. Yeah. And I I believe he left WWE just because of creative differences and the fact that he wasn't getting a singles run. And any idea he had creative was shutting down. So I feel that the reason he really wanted out of his contract, which they ended, I feel so bad. They ended up extending his contract by like six months because he was injured previously that year. So they extended his contract initially six more months to make up for that time that he had lost. But at that point, he was he was ready to go. He yeah. didn't want to stay those extra six months. So when he was finally able to get out of his contract, I'm glad AEW was an opportunity for him because for those few short months, he definitely got to flourish, especially with the Dark it, Order. I mean, yeah, he. Uh, uh, that's the good thing because this all happened recently. He at least got to do a lot of things he was happy with. Judging he, I'm judging that he was ha really happy with it the way he talked about it. Um, before these unfortunate, the unfortunate situation happened with him, you know, before he before he passed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's another thing I was gonna uh, say or even ask, but now that actually like slipped my mind. Oh, one of the things he was really happy with, and I need your help to kind of guide me through this one. Okay, it was something called the dog. The dog collar match. Okay, thank you. Yes, that. So he was really happy with that because they got um, to like kind of collab together. He collabed with Cody Rhodes. Okay. Okay, there you go. Um, was, it was yeah. actually his final match in AEW. Wow. Okay. The, oh my gosh, that's so sad because he was talking about how much that meant to him on this podcast. Like, he yeah. finally, he got to do things he didn't, like, get to do before on, on that particular match. Mm -hmm. The way he got to collab and the way they went about it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had his dog collar match on October 7th. And yeah. that's when he ended up losing the TNT Championship back to Cody yep. Rhodes. Yep. And... Cody holds it very dear to him as well and is very honored and feels very privileged that he got to have, you know, the final match with Brody Lee. Yeah. But it was pretty much right after that that um, I feel that he ended up actually in the Mayo Clinic for his illness. Yeah, he had been there since October of 2020, so... I don't know exactly how long after his match he ended up having to check into the Mayo Clinic, but it couldn't have been too far off if that was his last match. No, it seemed like it all happened very close in time. So that that's very, very unfortunate. But I'm glad that all these wrestlers and everybody he's met throughout his life kind of came together and gave him a nice, good tribute. I wonder what... Like his kids and his wife's gonna do now. That's kind of my where my thoughts go to. I know it's maybe a little off subject too, but I wonder what they're going to do next. Like what's next for them? Because they were kind of in the limelight in a way, if you will. So is there something in store for them other than Brody Lee Jr. being able to have a spot with AEW? I wonder if um, there's anything else that they're planning, wanting to do, or what is I she know. gonna do? Like I know that Brody Lee Jr. is an amateur wrestler, not like professional wrestling, like what yeah. his dad did, but an actual amateur, like school sports wrestling. Yeah. Um, he is an amateur wrestler. I don't really know like what's up and coming for them, but I know regardless of what it is, there are a lot of people that have their backs if anything were oh, to yeah. go wrong. I just recently saw within the last week or so that Cody and Brandy Rhodes and a couple of the other 
I want to say it was maybe Tony Khan, but I'm not 100% sure, so please don't quote me on that. But I know for sure at least Brandy and Cody were there. But they took the boys and Amanda to Disney. Oh, wow. So AEW people, I mean, everyone is still doing so many things for them behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, especially since it's been so recent as well. I'm sure they will Mm -hmm. throughout this year, too, and everything. Um, To kind of backtrack on Brody, uh, if we can, he used to call himself Huber Boy Number 2, which is something I touched on through my research. Yeah, that (laughs) was his debut name. Yes, and he was very attached to that. He said he's the only one that really liked it. <laughs> so he made a joke about about that. He was kind of picking on himself. How you said he picks on other people. He, did, he gave himself a hard time. But So he did a backyard wrestling. Mm-hmm. He was a backyard That's how wrestler. he started. Okay. Um, you would actually be surprised at how common backyard wrestling is. Can you explain um, what that is? Um, pretty much what it sounds you're wrestling in someone's backyard oh for real okay got it okay yeah uh backyard wrestling is pretty straightforward um, yeah it is yeah no way there's there. actually <laughs> quite a few people that have started through background wrestling i mean that's um, cool you're doing your passion that that was his passion yeah yeah uh, matt and jeff hardy and quite a few of their friends had a ring built in their backyard and i mean they were holding wrestling shows in their backyard so it actually was kind of the thing to do at that time yeah um definitely a lot better than uh the mattress wrestling that my brother-in-law and husband thought they needed to have in my mom's front room (laughs) a couple nights no um that's funny oh a couple uh, uh, only a couple nights ago uh not a couple nights ago they did yeah, I, this was, I saw that. That was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, there's actually the mattress wrestling videos on YouTube. Oh my gosh, it is. That is hilarious. Yes. They are funny. It, you know what? It, they did the whole, like, coming out entrance thing mm-hmm. and stuff. I watched those, Serena. That was hilarious. I think you put them on Facebook. That's where I saw them. And that was when I had my first Facebook. <laughs> but anyways, that's... <laughs> oh, that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff right there. Man, that made me laugh. They are such goofs. And Dan, I mean, he's he still wrestles. So, yeah. And I still need to watch the Vendetta. Yeah, um, there's watch- actually getting ready to be another one this coming Thursday at 7 again on GLWA's YouTube. It's a bunch of seating matches to determine their placement in the Ultimate Survivors Rumble. So you're going to see people like Kip Rude, Cody Love, Trayvon Smith. Man, those are just some of them that I'm coming up with off the top of my how, head. I'm interested to know how Dan did. Um, Dan ended up losing go- his match last okay. week on Vendetta to Shaman. Um, okay. That snake, Damian Saint, popped up on the screen, distracted Dan, and oh. Shaman came in for the win. Side yeah, note so about that, though, found out from my four-year-old that she was off to the side crying at the end of that match because Uncle Dan lost. Oh, yeah. she Don't make her mad. She'll go in there and beat someone up. Oh, my gosh. There was one show that Tank, he's one of the heels. He came out, him and Fireball, and they took danny's nerds that she was eating and started (gasps) eating her nerds and from that moment on that girl does not like tank and (laughs) yeah you know she holds a grudge they better watch out so they're going to be uh the girls are going to be there this thursday then well since all of the stuff for vendetta is pre-recorded you will more than likely still see them in the background so my kids will be in the background of that one, though, because they are currently up at Grandma's. What was Breakthrough? Uh, breakthrough is, okay, all these vendettas are leading up to their bigger show. Okay. So, um, JLWA Breakthrough is going to be a bigger show. There's a battle, like a Royal Rumble type thing, a battle royal where there's going to be multiple people in the ring. They're going to get thrown out. Oh. Oh. Last man standing, I believe, will get a title shot. 
Um, I believe Dan is in it. I'm gonna watch, I when I watch this, I'm gonna try to concentrate on who I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a favorite wrestler. I all gonna hear can't it. pick one because I like so many of them. I love the Gingas. I can't get in trouble for favoritism no. or anything like that. So you like, can't. Because- You're like a third of- party that yes. doesn't know them. I know exactly. a lot of them personally, like yep. Jaden and Theo so yeah. <laughs> and Dan. I literally always have to root for Uncle Jaden. I have to root for Uncle Dan. I have to root for the thieves on principle, even if they are the bad guys. Oh. Which it is funny to hear Danny just rant about Theo and then Callie sitting in the background going, I love Isaiah because Isaiah, who's Theo's tag partner, is one of Callie's favorite people. Oh. Yeah, these girls, they have their favorites. Danny's yeah. just really sad right now because Tyler's not wrestling due to his right. injury. So she's she's getting a little depressed. She's anxious for Tyler to come back. He's been out for quite some time now. His ankle injury happened like early this past summer. So oh. if he's rehabbing and everything like I would assume he is, I figure he'll probably be back to wrestling rather shortly. Okay, that's good. This year sometime. And where's he going to go? He wrestles for GLWA, EHF, BPWK? I don't, don't quote me on PWK, but I know he wrestles for EHF and GLWA for sure. Okay, okay. Now, does GLWA, does it run throughout the year? Mm -hmm. Or like what? Oh, it does. It does. Yes, they are a year-round company. Okay. Um, okay. I actually have been text the dates at one point, but I don't think I saved it. Sorry, Peyton. <laughs> uh, I probably uh, should I- save it because I want to continue to promote them. Yeah. And I've been Throughout. getting thanks uh, by Hayden, which is one of one half of the gingers. Yeah. But he also helps run GLWA, and yeah. he has thanked us for plugging GLWA for their vendettas, just to try and help them out and get yeah. some views yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Um, well, I, I wanted. To- oh, I was just gonna say, there's a lot of listeners that probably are into that stuff. Like my mom's into wrestling. Her husband's into wrestling. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people actually into it. Once I t- when I talked to my mom's husband, she he or he was like. Uh, Oh, it's a very popular thing. Like millions of people tune in for yeah. that. And I was like, I didn't it know this. Yeah. So I think it'd be a good idea to kind of do that and see what foot traffic gets sent over there and uh, tell no. him you're welcome. Or if he hears this, you're welcome. It's no skin off the back. I don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> we um, like helping. Yeah. <laughs> we do. And aside from Jill WA this week, I do have one more wrestling show that I want to promote. It'll be on January 30th at 7 p.m. It is hashtag Kevin Storm Not Allowed. Love the name of the show, by the way. Great mm. idea on that RCW. They run out of South Bend. Um, okay. Been a fan of RCW for a very long time. RCW has been a big part of my family. Dan wrestles for them as well. They are running this hashtag Kevin Storm Not Allowed show. Like I said, January 30th, 7 p.m. It's going to be live on Twitch. Ooh. Which we will have links provided for yes. these shows. And I will share them on our Facebook page. Just because I know that Heather's not a big, has not been into wrestling. But wrestling is not a big part of my life. And Ever since I can remember, you've always always you've been since right. since I've known you yeah and as much as you know I do love watching WWE and AEW and the bigger names indie wrestling is you know really really close to my heart and I want to help yeah. promote these companies and help especially right now when we can't physically be there don't yeah. miss out on your opportunity for wrestling these guys and gals are still doing everything they can to try and put a show on for you so please support them yeah there for this show you're gonna have rcw's owner you're gonna have brutus dylan 
You're going to have RCW No Limits champion Shady Chris Sion, RCW Heart of the Revolution champion Ryan Epic. I mean, you're going to have lots of names. There's Jorge Bravo, Theo Storm Jensen, Nerd the Fifth, who I have only seen wrestle once, but this kid just, he made me laugh. His initials literally spell out the word nerd, and he is the fifth. <laughs> Blake Wright, Chris Tano, obviously the young studs, Jaden Quick and Daniel Stark, Chip Walker, Dustin Mack, Mackenzie Black, the debut of Eric Dillinger, and from what I have read, there is actually going to be a very special one-night-only return competitor. But all the matches are being kept very close and under wraps. And no one knows who this very special one night competitor is. So please, guys, definitely go tune in to Facebook. If you can't get on Twitch, it's RCW Wrestling 10. Please watch them. Watch GLWA Vendetta on Thursday at 7. Actually, both shows are at 7. One's on Thursday, one's on Saturday. Just definitely go. go support your local indie wrestling. Okay, I can't say local because I'm sure not all of you are from Indiana, but but <laughs> just definitely support the indie wrestling. Yeah, up and coming places. Let's go get it. All right, now Brody Lee, back back to Brody Lee, Mr. Brody Lee, the legend. So at least from what I'm understanding, he's, a he's definitely going to go down as a legend. Yeah. I feel now, anyway. Well, you know, it seems like it. It seems like it. Uh, he was just the champ and a good down-to-earth guy that people liked, and he was a good performer. Um, so he started doing the backyard wrestling we were talking about, and he was doing it. He wanted to do it with his brother, but his brother ended up not doing it. I think that's what it was because he like ended up just being a referee or something like that. So then... Well, he went from that, and then he got into, oh my gosh, what, 2007? He did. Yeah, for 2007, he was part of Chikara. He wrestled through the Squared Circle Wrestling. Um, when he was in Chikara yeah. is when he had a really big feud with uh, Claudio Castanoli, who's also Cesaro. Uh, we were actually going back, my husband and I. Because we actually surprisingly have some Chikara DVDs with Brody Lee on them. And we've been watching some of his old stuff. But that was probably, I want to say, one of his best feuds was with Claudio. Cesaro, actually, one of his stories that he brought up of Brody was that he took pride in those tank tops. Because <laughs> as dirty as they looked... Claudio said they were the best smelling thing ever. And if you ripped one of his singlets or tank tops, he was mad. <gasps> did it because... ever get ripped? I'm guessing oh, it yeah. did. Yeah, Countless for sure. Times. <laughs> yeah. But um, Claudio was like, you know, he really took time and effort and put into those things. So the minute it got ripped, he would be upset because of just all the hard work that went into making something look so ugly but smelled so beautiful because i mean when you put people in headlocks and things like that they're gonna smell your clothes yeah and i could only imagine what sweaty smelly raunchy wrestling gear could smell like right i don't think but anybody actually wants to know that smell but i'm sure there are plenty of wrestlers out there that do know that smell oh for sure of course they do no. He didn't sign with WWE until March of 2012. Okay. So two, that, two years later. Okay. Uh, that's when well, he signed no. his developmental contract with WWE. He made his Florida oh. Championship Wrestling debut May 18th of 2012, where he debuted for the first time as Luke Harper. Okay. Wow. So then, he, but he's got stuff all the way back 2007, where he's just like up and coming and yeah. trying to get going. Um, okay. Okay. Well, wow. he was in the business for 17 years from when Whew. he debuted as Huber Boy number two all the way up to AEW. So, I mean, he wow. had almost seven or 20 years of experience, 
which is insane Boy. for someone at the age of 41. I mean, I don't even think he was really that old. And that's another reason that no. it makes this just so sad for me is he wasn't old at all. He was very, very young. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, yeah. And with young kids, too. Like, he definitely could have been a grandparent. That's what's really just daunting and sad about the whole thing. Yeah. So, do you do you have any uh thought le- like other thoughts on Brody Lee you want to touch on or anything? Um I am going to make another plug. Sorry guys, I'm sure you're probably sick of me promoting things, but <laughs> I we're going to do it anyway. It, especially with the benefit that comes from this. Um if you were are a Brody Lee fan or just want to get the shirt because of the fact that all the proceeds go to Brody's family. If you go to mm. Pro Wrestling T Shop AEW, there is a tribute shirt for Brody Lee. And all the entire proceeds go to Brody's family. It goes to Amanda, it goes to Nolan, it goes to Brody. And these shirts, they actually, in less than two hours, broke the record for most shirts sold within 24 hours. Which was actually wow. held by Sting because he had just recently debuted at AEW and that was such a big moment for people that as soon as it happened, everybody went and bought Sting's shirt. But wow. now these tribute shirts have surpassed that. They, in two hours, so I mean, people were on it. But if you were a fan, are a fan, or just because you have a kind heart, go buy the shirt. Yeah, help Amanda and the boys out. It just times are tough right now, and they just they went through probably the most traumatic thing they could have. They lost Brody, a father, a husband. Yeah. So you know, it actually ended up breaking another record too as the highest selling shirt of twenty twenty. Oh wow! But, you know, the record breaking doesn't matter. I like it for the fact that it shows just how many people have reacted and are wanting to have the shirt and help the family out. So please, guys, if you're feeling compassionate, if you are a fan, check out AEW Shop through Pro Wrestling Tees and definitely pick yourself up a Brody Lee tribute shirt. Even even, uh, as a gift to someone, too. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys. As we draw to a close on the topic that is Brody Lee and wrestling, we want to thank you all for tuning in. Please, 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 if you are a fan of indie wrestling, definitely check out GLWA Vendetta at 7 p.m. on YouTube and RCW show hashtag Kevin Storm Not Allowed on January 30th at 7 p.m. that will stream live on Twitch and Facebook. Again, we can't thank you guys enough definitely make sure you vote we will probably close them a day early this week just because we're going to try a little new scheduling tweak so polls will probably close wednesday afternoon definitely make sure you get your votes in and we will talk to you all next time bye guys